to interpreting the Bible, there's basically two ways we can go about it. One, we can bring our ideas of what we think the text means to the text and we actually force it into the text. That's called eisegesis. The other way we can approach the biblical text is we can come with no preconceived ideas or as little as we possibly can and seek to discover what the text says, getting something out of the text that was originally put in there by the author. That's called exegesis. So on the one hand, eisegesis, if you think I for importing something, so you're bringing something into the text, or exports, uh, where you're taking something out of the text. So one is eisegesis, one is exegesis. Now, for those people that unwittingly perhaps use eisegesis as a method for determining what a scripture means, they've invented some laws in, in order to make the Bible fit their type of interpretation. I'd like to look at a couple of these now. When I was growing up, I heard preachers use these uh, and I just assumed they were laws that scholars generally held to. It wasn't until perhaps much later that I discovered that there's not many people that hold these ideas of how to interpret the Bible, but, but those that do only do it because they need it to support their preconceived ideas. Here's the first one. It's called the law of first reference. The law of first reference, put simply, is that a word in scripture will always mean what it meant when it was first mentioned. So for example, the word leaven is first used in scripture to speak of corruption or Gentiles or sin. Um, in other words, it's a fairly negative connotation in that word. Therefore, the idea is that wherever the word leaven occurs throughout scripture, it's always going to mean what it meant when it was first introduced into the text. The problem with this theory well, this idea, and they even go so far as to call it a law, is that the context of a passage is what determines the word. This is because words in scripture are not unequivocal. They are not unequivocal. That is, unequivocal means uh, one meaning. They are equivocal. So they are equated to the words around them. So when we look at a word in scripture, you can't say the first way it was used in scripture is the way it will be used throughout the rest of the Bible. It just doesn't work. The context demands that we take each word as it occurs in its context and we see how the biblical author is intending to use this word. So for example, leaven. Leaven generally is a negative influence. It generally does mean something that corrupts. It generally means that but it doesn't always mean that sometimes it simply means something different for example there's the 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 feast of pentecost where the high priest was required to take leaven and actually use it in the ceremony he was to he was required to bake bread with leaven in it and they were to partake of it now th this clearly doesn't mean what it perhaps generally means or most often means it's referring to something else now for those of us that know the symbolism or the, the types of the old testament this was referring to the day when god would take jew and gentile and make them one people anyway i hope those things help you to understand the importance of reading the bible in context if you just do that you'll go a long way to understanding your bible better catch you later for more information on how to understand your Bible better, please visit andrewcorbett.net.